guys, it's Pokegirl7 here, and today is the three year anniversary of Pokemon Go. So yes, the game has actually been out for three years. It definitely does not feel like three years, at least to me. And guys, I was kind of thinking, the game has changed a lot in the past three years. The game is basically completely different in 2019 than it was back in 2016 on release. So much has changed, so many new features have been added. And in today's video, I kind of wanted to talk about all of the differences between 2016 and 2019. A lot of people think Pokemon Go is dead now in 2019, but I kind of wanted to make this video just to let everybody know that stopped playing back in the day, how much has actually changed, how much better the game is now. It honestly is such a good game compared to when it was first released. There's so much more to do in the game. It's absolutely crazy. So I guess that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. There is a lot to talk about. Like I said, there are a ton of new features now in Pokemon Go. So I guess let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with the nearby system. So the way that you track down Pokemon in the game is very different than it used to be back in 2016. So let's talk about what the differences are. In 2016, we had something called the three step track system. So basically how it worked is Pokemon on the nearby had three footprints above them. If you walked closer, the footprints would go down to two and then one until you got to the Pokemon. This system was bad because you had to do a lot of guessing for which direction to walk in. Sometimes it would take absolutely forever and the Pokemon would despawn and it was honestly a little bit dangerous. A lot of people were staring at their phone waiting for the footprints to go down and people were walking into dangerous areas. I heard that somebody walked over a cliff. I think that might have been just a rumor. I'm not sure but I did hear of a lot of people getting hurt when the game first came out and I really think it was because of this three step track system. So it was kind of cool to see how close you were getting to a Pokemon. The only thing is you really had to guess which direction to walk in and it was very dangerous so I'm kind of glad they done away with this system. The 2019 tracking system is very different. So now if a Pokemon on the nearby is near a Pokestop, there will be a photo from the Pokestop that you can tap on and it will then direct you to the Pokestop where the Pokemon is located. So it basically takes you exactly where you need to go. This is great in areas with Pokestops but a little difficult for wild spawns away from Pokestops. These Pokemon only show a grass icon and don't really tell you if you are getting further or closer to the Pokemon. So if you're not near Pokestops and a Pokemon you're tracking isn't around a Pokestop, it is very hard to find. Like I said, there's only a grass icon icon there's no three footsteps or anything it doesn't really tell you if you're getting closer or further away so you have to guess a lot but I do think if they added the three step tracking system to those Pokemon it would be very unsafe I think people would be too focused on their phone and not their surroundings so basically nowadays if you find a Pokemon that's not near a Pokestop it's pretty darn hard to find I usually don't even try unless it's something super rare I'll kind of go out of my way to find it but honestly I mostly play Pokemon Go in my downtown area where there's a bunch of Pokestops and it's pretty easy to track down Pokemon that way. It takes me directly to that Pokemon. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool. I honestly like the tracking system these days a lot more than the old one. So now let's talk about gyms in Pokemon Go. So the way that you battle gyms is very different than it used to be. The battling itself is very similar to how it was before but the gyms have been completely reworked since the game came out. In 2016, if a gym belonged to your team, you could choose a Pokemon to fight and raise the gym's prestige points. Prestige points affected how many Pokemon could be left in the gym, which made the gym harder to defeat. If you successfully raised your gym's prestige points, you could leave your Pokemon there. The more Pokemon you had in gyms, the more Pokecoins you could get every day. If a gym belonged to another team, you could battle it with six Pokemon at a time to lower the gym's prestige points, and eventually you could take every gym defender out. Once all the gym defenders were out, you could claim the gym and leave your own Pokemon there. So gyms have changed a lot since 2016. It's very weird to go back and actually look at how it used to be because I'm so used to the new gym system now. So they've completely done away with prestige points and let's talk about what it's like now in 2019. In gyms these days, up to six Pokemon can be left in a gym. Prestige points no longer exist and Pokemon now have something called motivation points. If a gym belongs to your team, you can leave your Pokemon there to defend the gym as long as there aren't already six defenders. You can feed defenders berries to raise their motivation points. You can tell how many motivation points a Pokemon has by how full the heart above their head is. You will also get Stardust and sometimes Candy for feeding gym defenders. You can also now get a max of 50 coins a day for having Pokemon in gyms. So no matter how many Pokemon you have in the gym, you can only get 50 coins a day. Some people like that and some people don't. I personally don't mind. I like getting my 50 a day. But it would be nice if we could get a little bit more depending on how many Pokemon we had in gyms. But nope, it's just 50 a day. If a gym belongs to another team, you can battle the Pokemon in the gym with up to six of your Pokemon at a time. 
You will have to battle each Pokemon until their motivation points get to zero, then they will be kicked out of the gym. When all defenders are kicked out, you can claim the gym by putting your own Pokemon in it. Five more trainers can then come along and put their Pokemon in the gym as well. If you want to keep the gym under your team's name, you have to keep your Pokemon fed with berries. You can actually do this from home. So there's actually a feature in the game where if your Pokemon needs some more motivation points and needs to be fed, the game will give you a notification and it will let you remotely feed your Pokemon berries from anywhere that you are. So yeah, in 2016, gyms used to be kind of focused around prestige points and now they're focused around motivation points. In my opinion, I used to really like the old gym system, but I like the newer one more. I've never been much of a gym battler anyways, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the two gym systems. Which one's your favorite? So now let's talk about which Pokemon are actually available to catch in the game. This has changed a lot since 2016. So when the game was first released, the only Pokemon that were available to catch were the original 151 Pokemon from the Kanto region. It was actually more like the original 149 Pokemon because Mewtwo and Mew were not available just yet, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now in Pokemon Go, we have Pokemon from other regions. We have the Johto region, the Hoenn region, and the Sinnoh region so far. And these generations of Pokemon have kind of been rolled out gradually. And we actually have Generation 5, 6, 7, and eventually 8 that can come out to Pokemon Go. So we have a lot more to look forward to. There's been a lot of events of Pokemon Go surrounding these releases of these new Pokemon. But it's so great to have new Pokemon to catch. The game got really stale back in 2016. After you completed your Pokedex or caught everything that spawns around your area, the game got really boring. But now we have so many Pokemon to catch and collect, it's a lot more fun. We also now are able to catch legendary Pokemon, which have also been gradually rolled out as well. Back when the game first came out, there were no legendary Pokemon in the game. We had no idea how they would actually be released, but they have been released in Pokemon Go now, and we still have more that should be released soon. And we'll talk about a little bit later um, how they roll those out. We also have mythical Pokemon, and those are actually released in a very special way as well. So now let's talk about raid battles. So raids are a huge part of Pokemon Go now. A lot of people really play Pokemon Go just for the raids, so let's talk about what raids are. Raids are special battles held in gyms where you can battle large Pokemon along with other trainers. Raid bosses come in different tiers that differ in difficulty. First off, we have Tier 1, which is pretty easy and can be done with one trainer very easily. Tier 2 is pretty moderate. It usually can be done with one trainer, but it puts up a little bit more of a fight. Tier 3 is pretty hard, can usually be done by one high level trainer with high level Pokemon and the correct type matchings, but it's a little bit more difficult. If you don't know what you're doing, you're probably not going to be able to do a Tier 3 raid all by yourself, but it's definitely possible. And then we have Tier 4. Tier 4 gets pretty hard. It takes two high level trainers minimum with good counters, but can be easily taken with three to four trainers. So some people can take down a level 4 raid boss with two trainers, but that's if you're really educated on what Pokemon to use and you do it just right. But usually for level 4 raids, you have to have at least three trainers or more. And then we have tier 5, which is definitely the hardest, and it's usually for legendary Pokemon. So legendary Pokemon are always tier 5 raid bosses, so they put up a little bit of a fight. Some tier 5 raids can be done with two high level trainers with good counters, but most require at least four trainers, some even require five to seven or more. It really just varies on the raid boss's individual stats. So let's talk about how raids show up and where you can find them. So raids show up randomly at gyms. Raid bosses appear in eggs that take one hour to hatch. The egg then hatches to reveal the raid boss, then a 45 minute timer appears. Trainers have 45 minutes to complete this raid battle. Up to 20 trainers can raid in one raid lobby at a time, and you can only battle that raid boss one time. After you defeat the raid boss, you can attempt to catch it. You will catch the raid boss in Premier Balls. The amount of Premier Balls you get can vary on multiple things. How much damage your Pokemon contributed, contribution by your team, and if you had an Ultra or Best Friend battling with you. Raids require a thing called Raid Passes, and you can actually get one free Raid Pass each day by spinning a Photo Disc at a gym. And I actually just remembered that the Photo Disc at a gym is a new feature as well. It's basically like a Pokestop within a gym. Raids have been a great way to release legendary Pokemon in Pokemon Go, and it really is a lot of fun to get together with your friends and try to take down this massive Pokemon. And Raid Bosses can actually be non-legendary 
legendary Pokemon as well. Most of the tier 1 through 4 Pokemon are non-legendary, but tier 5 is usually strictly for legendary Pokemon. So now let's talk about one of my favorite features of Pokemon Go, Shiny Pokemon. So shinies have become a huge part of the game. It's my favorite thing to do in the game. It's a lot of other people's favorite thing to do in Pokemon Go. So let's talk about what shiny Pokemon are. Shiny Pokemon are rare Pokemon that are a different color than usual. So let's say a Lapras is usually a blue color. A shiny Lapras is actually purple and it's very rare. So in Pokemon Go, if you see a Pokemon on the map that can be shiny, you actually have to tap on it to see if it's shiny or not. So if you saw a Lapras in the wild, it would just appear to be a blue regular Lapras. But if you tap on that Lapras and it ends up being purple, that is a shiny Lapras and it is super rare. I'll make a more in-depth video about how shinies work in Pokemon Go because I'm really passionate about shiny hunting. It's a lot of fun and I know a lot of people really enjoy it. So that's coming in the future. So not all Pokemon can currently be shiny in the game. They usually release a few shiny forms at a time. So there's some Pokemon right now that cannot be shiny. Let's take Carvana for example. You cannot click on a Carvana and find a shiny right now Pokemon Go. One day it'll probably be released, but they kind of do it through events. Pokemon Go has a lot more events now, and usually they release a couple of shinies for each event. One of the biggest events we have for shiny Pokemon would definitely be Community Day. Community Day is a monthly event featuring a special Pokemon. The shiny form of the event Pokemon is released and made less rare during the event. The event always lasts for three hours. And the special Pokemon gets an exclusive move, we have 3 hour lures, and 3 hour bonuses usually like triple XP, triple Stardust, or double egg hatching speed. A lot of people come back to Pokemon Go each month to play Community Day, it's a huge event and it's mostly centered around the shiny hunting. Shinies are made super common during Community Day for whatever the special Pokemon is. So last month for example we had Slack Off Community Day and basically there were Slack Off spawning all over the map and you had a pretty good chance of finding a shiny Slack Off. Not every single one was shiny, but it was pretty common to get one. And it's going to be the same thing next month. We're going to have Mudkip Community Day. Mudkip's going to be spawning everywhere, and we're going to have a chance to get shiny Mudkip for the first time in Pokemon Go. Community Day has been a great way to release shinies in the game. It's one of my favorite days to play Pokemon Go, and I just really love shiny hunting in general, and it's become a huge part of the game. I cannot express this enough. They've made a lot of special events just for shinies, and it really brings a lot of people back to the game. So now let's talk about PvP. So PvP stands for player versus player and it's basically a way to battle other trainers. You can now battle with trainers nearby or trainers on your friends list that are ultra friend or best friend. So we're going to talk about this friends list stuff a little bit later. PvP has developed its own massive community in Pokemon Go for competitive players. So now let's move on to the friends list. You can now be friends with up to 200 trainers in Pokemon Go. Friends can send gifts collected from Pokestops. Gifts can include useful items such as Pokeballs, Great Balls, and Ultra Balls, Revives and Potions, Stardust, and Evolution items. So one thing I forgot to mention about the gifts from your friends is that you can actually get a special 7 kilometer egg from these gifts and they usually contain a baby Pokemon and a Alolan Pokemon and they all have a pretty decent chance of being shiny. So it's really fun to hatch 7 kilometer eggs. It's one of my favorite eggs to hatch in the game just because there's so many things that can be shiny in them. So there's actually a lot of benefits to having friends in Pokemon Go other than the gifts. You can receive XP for sending gifts. You can now trade with friends who are on the nearby. So that's another feature we got to talk about. Trading has been released in Pokemon Go. You can PvP battle with friends nearby or any friends that are ultra or best friends. So you do have to be close to battle friends that are less than ultra friends on your friends list. But if they're ultra friends or best friends, you can battle them from anywhere in the world. One interaction with your friend each day increases your friendship level. So a few different ways to increase your friendship level is to open a gift, trade a Pokemon, do a PvP battle or raid together. You get XP each time you reach a new friendship milestone. So the different friendship milestones are good friends, great friends, ultra friends, and best friends. You can also see your friend's trainer avatar and their buddy Pokemon in your game, and you can also see some of their stats. And now let's talk about trading. Trading has been one of the coolest features of the game. I remember when I first started playing, I wished so bad that I could trade with other people for a really cool Pokemon. So trading is actually available now in the game. So let's talk about how it works. To trade with another trainer, you must be within 100 feet of each other. You must be on each other's friends list. And it does require Stardust. So some trades cost more Stardust than other. Special trades cost even more. So special trades are trades for legendary Pokemon, Pokemon you don't have in the Pokedex, shiny Pokemon, and it actually costs even more if it's a shiny Pokemon that one of you doesn't have. The higher your friendship level is, the better Stardust discount you can get. So 
So for example, if you trade a shiny Pokemon with somebody that's a best friend on your list, that's going to cost a lot less Stardust than somebody who's a great friend on your list. When Pokemon are traded, the IVs are re-rolled. And there's actually a new feature in the game called Lucky Pokemon, and this is actually really cool. So when Pokemon are traded, they have a chance at becoming lucky. Lucky Pokemon have a special glow around them, and a Lucky Pokemon costs less Stardust to power up. So Lucky Pokemon are actually pretty useful because uh, if it's a Pokemon that you really want to power up all the way, it's going to cost you a lot less Stardust, and that is such a great feeling. You can actually become lucky friends with your best friends on your friends list. So if you're already best friends with another trainer, you can't level up anymore, but if you do an interaction with each other, like opening a gift, trading a Pokemon, doing a battle, or a raid battle, you can actually have a chance of becoming lucky friends once per day. So it's not really common to become lucky friends with someone, but you do have a chance each time you open a gift or just interact with them. You can only become lucky friends with, like I said, people who are your best friends. And lucky friends are basically friends who you're guaranteed to have a lucky trade with next time you trade. So if you ever become lucky friends with someone, make sure you set up an awesome trade for a Pokemon that you really want to turn out lucky because it's 100% guaranteed with your lucky friends. So now let's talk about the new items in the game. There are tons of items that have been added to the game since 2016, so let's start off with rare candies. Rare candies are actually candies that can be used to power up or evolve any Pokemon that you choose to. So rare candies have been very useful. Next up we have evolution items. So some Pokemon require special items to evolve and we're going to talk about a little bit later how to get these items, but they are crucial to the game if you want to complete the Pokedex. Next up we have super incubators. Super incubators hatch eggs 1.5 times as fast as a normal incubator. They do cost 200 coins each in the game's shop, but you can usually buy them in a bundle package for a little bit cheaper. And I'll, I'll be honest, I only use super incubators in the game. I never use regular incubators. It's so nice to hatch eggs so fast now. And then we have star pieces. Star pieces activate 50% more stardust for 30 minutes, so they're basically like a lucky egg for stardust. They're not available in the shop for individual purchase, but they're often in special event sale boxes in bundles, so that's really the way that I get them. I just buy the boxes with incubators and incense, and a lot of times they have star pieces in them too. And then we have lure modules. So we've had lure modules in Pokemon Go before, but recently some new ones have been added that are special. So old lure modules used to spawn like all kinds of different Pokemon, but now we have special lures that spawn a specific type of Pokemon. So these lure modules have something else really special about them. So if you're within walking distance from one of these lure modules, you can actually evolve special Pokemon. So if you're near a glacial module and you evolve an Eevee, it will evolve into a Glaceon. If you're near a mossy lure and you evolve Eevee, it will evolve into Leafeon. And if you're near a magnetic lure and you evolve a Magneton, it will evolve into Magnezone. And if you're near a magnetic lure and you evolve a Nose Pass, it will evolve into Probopass. These lure modules last for 30 minutes like a regular lure. They spawn specific types of Pokemon and can be bought for 200 Pokecoins each. So they're pretty expensive. They're not ever available in any special boxes. Hopefully soon Niantic makes it a little bit easier to get these special lure modules. But as of now, they're two bucks a pop. And now let's move on to the next item that has been added to the game. So next up we have TMs. TMs are technical machines that change the moves of Pokemon. So a fast TM can change the fast move of a Pokemon, while a charge TM can change the charge move of a Pokemon. TMs can be found in raid battles and PvP battles, and also research breakthrough boxes, which we're going to talk about next. So these days in Pokemon Go, we have a whole new system called Research. So we have Field Research and Special Research, and then we have a Research Breakthrough. So let's talk about what all of these things mean. Field Research tasks can be obtained at Pokestops. Each Pokestop gives you one task per day. Completing Field Research tasks can reward you with Pokeballs, Revives and Potions, Rare Candies, and sometimes Pokemon Encounters, and also Berries. If you complete at least one Field Research task per day, you can earn a stamp. Once you earn seven stamps, you can open a research breakthrough box, which contains a special Pokemon. Usually these Pokemon are legendary Pokemon, and sometimes they've been a few other things, but it's typically legendaries. After you open your research breakthrough box, it resets and you can start collecting stamps again starting the next day. So the research breakthrough box is awesome. Like I said before, that's a good way to get charged TMs. You can get a lot of other special things. You can get the Sinnoh Stone evolution items. A bunch of cool stuff comes from that, and you can get legendary Pokemon. 
Right now we have Kyogre and Groudon, lots of awesome, lots of yos in the research breakthrough box. You can get shiny legendaries that way. I really love this research system. And then we have the special research system. So this one's a little bit different. This is actually the way that mythical Pokemon have been released in the past. So special research quests are multiple part quests that give you tasks to complete with rewards along the way. These tasks are provided by Professor Willow. Usually at the end of the special research you are rewarded with a special Pokemon. It's typically a mythical Pokemon such as Mew, Celebi, Meltan, or Jirachi. Those are all of the mythicals that we've had so far in Pokemon Go. And there's actually been a couple of other special research quests like we've had one for Spiritomb on Halloween. That was really fun. And right now we actually have the Jumpstart Research Quest, which isn't really for a specific Pokemon. It's actually just a quest to help people get caught up in the game. Uh, it rewards a lot of XP and Stardust. You actually get a guaranteed Shiny Eevee from that. It's a lot of fun, but Special Research is just a lot of fun. They don't happen that often. They happen every few months or so, but they're really fun for really special events like Go Fest last year and Go Fest this year both had Special Research Quests. Last year it was for Celebi, this year it was for uh, Jirachi, so special research really is special. It's really fun and I think everyone really enjoys it. And now we can talk about the differences in the AR mode from 2016 and 2019. So as you guys know, Pokemon Go is an augmented reality game and the AR mode back in the day wasn't really the best and it's gotten a lot better now. So let's talk about what the differences are. In 2016 we had a very standard AR mode. Pokemon remained the same distance away from you no matter how much you moved. So they were just stationary the whole time. You couldn't really get any creative shots up close with the Pokemon. You couldn't interact with the Pokemon or walk around it. It was very basic and not realistic. And this AR mode was actually for Pokemon that had not been caught yet. You could not take AR photos of Pokemon that you caught before. And then we got introduced with AR Plus mode. I really loved AR Plus mode when it came out. It got me really into the whole AR aspect of Pokemon Go. So with AR Plus, you could now walk around and get close to the Pokemon. And it made for much nicer photos. It was actually still only for Pokemon not caught yet. But it looked a lot better. It was much better than the standard AR mode. But then we actually had the release of Ghost Snapshot, which completely changed the game, at least for me. So Ghost Snapshot is basically a better version of AR+. Plus. You can walk around and get close to the Pokemon, and you can now interact with it. You can tap on the screen and make the Pokemon do its little attack, and it makes for really good photos. And Ghost Snapshot actually detects raised surfaces. So if you want to put a Pokemon up on a table, you can easily do that. It honestly makes for amazing photography and Ghost Snapshot has been one of my favorite features in the game. And Ghost Snapshot is actually for Pokemon that have already been caught. So you can use a Ghost Snapshot for any Pokemon. And I did want to mention with AR Plus mode, the game would crash a lot for some reason. And like I said, it was for Pokemon you haven't caught yet. So you maybe you find a shiny Pokemon you're taking an AR Plus photo of it and the game crashes, you could lose that Pokemon forever. But with Ghost Snapshot, you can just catch your Pokemon and then take a picture of your new Shiny or your new Pokemon and you don't have to worry about losing it or the game crashing or anything. So I really love Ghost Snapshot. I post photos on Instagram all the time of my photos. It's just so much fun to take good pictures. And I think this is one of the best things that could have done since Pokemon Go is an augmented reality game. It makes the game feel much more like an AR game. Next up, we have the Buddy System. So the buddy system has been in Pokemon Go for a really long time. I actually think it got released in 2016 or maybe early 2017. It wasn't as soon as the game was released, but it was pretty early on. But we're still going to talk about it in today's video. So for the buddy system, you can choose a Pokemon that you want to walk with you. Walking can earn candies for your buddy Pokemon. Some Pokemon only require one kilometer for a candy, while others may require three kilometers or five kilometers. And legendary and mythical Pokemon actually require 20 kilometers walked for one candy. So that is a lot of work. But the buddy system is just a fun way to have the friendship aspect with your Pokemon. And it's also to get candies for Pokemon that you might not typically find candy for. And then we have Adventure Sync. I love Adventure Sync. It's one of my favorite parts of the game now. It helps me out so much with hatching eggs. So let's talk about what it is. Adventure Sync is a feature that allows Pokemon Go app to track distance while the app is closed. It helps a lot with egg hatching. So basically, if you're not playing the game, you're just walking around doing your own thing, you can still get distance in Pokemon Go, and it helps your eggs hatch, helps you get candies for your buddy Pokemon. It's super useful. Every Monday, you'll be rewarded by how many kilometers you walked that week. So it does track how much you walk each week. If you walk five kilometers, you'll get rewards, but you get more rewards if you walk 25 kilometers, and even more if you walk 50 kilometers. So for these rewards, you can get Pokeballs, rare candy, eggs, and stardust. You can actually get special eggs from these rewards and usually they end up being pretty good. 
So now let's talk about the mystery box from Pokemon Let's Go. So Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu came out in November 2018 and you can actually link your Pokemon Go account to Pokemon Let's Go. Whenever you link your Pokemon Go account to your Switch, you can transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Go, but not the other way around. So basically, if you catch Pokemon in Pokemon Go, you can trade it over to Go Park in Let's Go Eevee or Pikachu, but you cannot trade a Pokemon from Let's Go to Pokemon Go. When you transfer a Pokemon, you are given a mystery box that contains an incense that spawns the mythical Pokemon Meltan. So it's basically a 30 minute incense box that will spawn these special little mythical Pokemon. And this mythical Pokemon was actually released with this feature in Let's Go and Pokemon Go. So Meltan is very special and if you want one, you have to get it this way. I don't think there's any other way to get it right now. So you can open these mystery boxes every seven days. And sometimes Pokemon Go will hold events where you can open a mystery box every three days instead and Shiny Meltan actually becomes available. And I actually got my Shiny Meltan that way. I'm pretty proud of it. But yeah, the mystery box is a pretty cool and random feature to come to the game. So that's all for the new features that have been added to Pokemon Go since 2016. I really want to say the game has changed so much. It seems like there's just so much more to do now. And I really didn't realize it until I really did all my research and tried to make this video. So much has changed and this game is more alive now than ever. I will say at launch is the biggest that the game has ever been, but we're actually getting really close to being that big again right now. So currently we have 60 million people that play Pokemon Go monthly and 12 million of those trainers play every single day. So it goes to show a lot of people still play Pokemon Go every day and it is very much alive and I really recognize it whenever I go to the Go Fest event in Chicago. It is absolutely insane how many people are there just for that event. It's about 20,000 people each day. So I think it was 60,000 total this year in Chicago. That is a lot of people there for that specific event. But there's so many people that play Pokemon Go every day. So I really do want to point out that the game is not dead. It is very much alive. I love Pokemon Go. I'm glad I stuck with it. A lot of people started playing in 2016 and the game wasn't very good. I'll be honest. I'm not sure why I stuck around because the game got stale really fast. There were no features other than catching Pokemon. You basically only caught Pokemon in Pokemon Go and that was pretty much it. And now it's just completely different. So I'm glad I stuck around. But for those of you guys who left back in 2016, 2017, you might want to come back and try the game because it's pretty good and honestly, it's one of the most popular mobile games of all time. It's played every single day by 12 million people. It can't get much better than that. But I guess that's it guys. I'm a little bit biased because I am a Pokemon Go YouTuber, but I just really love this game and I want other people to love it as much as I do. But anyways guys, this video was a lot of fun to make. It was really nice to take a step back and really reflect on the last three years of Pokemon Go. I can't believe it's been three years. But anyways guys, I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video right here. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel to join my Gengar gang. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!